Hey, this is Tyler White. If the power goes out and you can't communicate or recharge your equipment, what do you do? I'm gonna show you this simple tutorial on how to build expandable solar power systems to answer that question, so stick with me. On page 29 of the Survival Sanctuary book, it goes over how to build expandable solar power systems. There's some key things that you wanna take away from this though. So the way that it works, and I really like to explain it in layman's terms so it makes a little more sense, is solar panels act like water, batteries act like cisterns to hold the water. The bigger the battery, the better, bigger the cistern. The bigger the solar panel, the more water it can collect during that water collection time or daylight. So if you've got a small battery and a large solar panel, it's gonna power it up quick and then it's just gonna do nothing with that extra water. Let's say that water or sunlight, it goes nowhere. If you've got a larger battery and a small solar panel, it's gonna take a lot longer to fill that battery up, but then you have a bigger reservoir of water or electricity. So you kinda of wanna make it so that a full day of power collection from the sunlight on your solar panel will recharge your one battery within that, time, that duration of time. If you need more power reserves, get a bigger battery with that same size solar panel and leave it there longer. But know that that battery is not gonna take off in the course of one day. If you need more overall power, get a larger set of solar panels, but do understand that there's a certain point where that battery can only hold so much. In this project, you'll build a 400 watt home solar power system by starting with a 100 watt solar power kit and expand it to 400 watts by adding three additional 100 watt solar panels. As you add panels, you'll also increase the size of your battery bank. By adding additional batteries wired in parallel to increase battery capacity, more cisterns, without increasing the voltage. As a rule of thumb, you should increase battery capacity by approximately 35 amp hours per additional 100 watts of solar panel that you add. So if I've got about a 35, 40 amp hour battery and I've got 100 watts, that's good in one day, right? And if I'm going to be using electricity from that system actively, let's say I'm pulling five watts, all right? So I want to, to understand that that five watts that I'm pulling from that system is not going to my battery. So if it's a 35 amp hour battery and it's 100 watts and it takes eight hours of sunlight to fill that up, I'm only gonna put 30 amp hours in there and I'm gonna need another hour or so the next day to compensate for that. So you need to calculate how much you wanna store for nighttime use and how much you're gonna use during the day and make sure that your solar panels output that much so that you have an excess of solar supply to run the things that you wanna run while backing up the battery source and then you need to make sure that the battery is large enough to both power your things, your fridge or whatever during the nighttime and the solar panels are large enough to power it during the day and have a surplus to fill up the battery. A little bit complicated, but it's really easy math. 35 amp hours of electricity from 100 watts. Figure out how much you're gonna use, build the system accordingly. So it says a 100 watt solar panel can charge 35 amp hours or 420 watt hours, 12 volt DC battery in a single day's sunlight and a 400 watt solar array can charge four of them for a total of 140 amp hours or 1.68 kilowatt hours of stored energy per day for years. Not bad return on a modest 850 investment. And this is assuming that you buy in these specific components. So the way that they've got that set up here is they've got four solar panels going into a charge controller. What is a charge controller? Well, I've got a couple of them here. A charge controller does one of, a, one of two things. When there's no sunlight on a solar panel, it can actually drain electricity from your battery. So this, tr this prevents from reverse pulling happening out of the battery. And when a battery's full, you can melt or blow that thing up if you continue to try and charge it. So this also prevents overcharge from happening. One other thing that's nice is that you can jack new systems into the charge controller. So this charge controller is a bio -NO, uh charge controller, right here, bio -NO charge controller. And it's got 
a slot for the solar panels. Now, these charge controllers have a maximum input amount. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure how many that is. Let's see, rated voltage are 12, 24, 36, and 48 volts. Um, rated to 30 amp max, and the US out, USB output is five volts at one amp max. So that's good to know. I, I don't want to exceed 30 amps of input wattage into this device or I'm gonna blow it. So that lets me know that the solar panels that I'm adding to this connection cannot exceed 30 amps. Now the battery or the charging is gonna be into this connection. I've got an Anderson power pole connector because that's what a majority of the ham radios are using so, and that's what I'm primarily using this device for is to recharge batteries that I run uh, USB and cigarette lighter adapters or 12 volt adapters off of and to run standalone ham radios. Now this last one is a light connection. It's just another connection that can be a battery or a, a steady running something. This can be your fridge, whatever it is that we want to hook up. And then we've got some USB ports. I mean, man, USB are like magic. There's everything, cameras, everything runs off USBs nowadays. So they're really nice to have and handy to have in the charge controller. Now, the limiting factor, the thing that you want to make the largest if you're going to expand it is your charge controller. If you're going to run 400 watts through a little charge controller, that first 100 watt solar panel may not blow it. Maybe not the second one, but the third or fourth one's going to blow it out. So I have a large high capacity charge controller right here that I'm actually going to use in a vehicle. And this bigger charge controller gives, the, gives me the ability to have a more expandable system. So if I know I'm gonna run 400 watts through the system, I don't wanna use that littler charge controller. I wanna use this larger charge controller. That way I can hook a 100 watt solar panel up to it. And then maybe I park in the shade and add two more 100 watts of solar panel in an array. And then maybe I have a semi-permanent shelter and go up to 400. Uh, watts of solar panel. So in the beginning, if you're trying to save money, the first thing that you want to buy and not skimp on is your charge controller. Another thing that you need to know about this is the charge controller type that you get is specific to the battery type that you get. So your car battery is a lead acid battery. This one is a lithium ion, iron phosphate battery, substantially lighter. I can uh, completely take it to zero. I get more fills and empties per battery and there's less memory problems. So it's also a lot more expensive and it charges differently. Now, when you're gonna hook up your system, you need to decide what kind of battery type am I gonna use? How many, in the end, what's the maximum amount of wattage I need to run through this system? Once you come up with those numbers, get the charge controller that will work, start with a solar panel and a battery. Then if you want to get more storage tank of electricity, add more batteries, right? If you're using your electricity in a big burst and then you wait a few days, you want a big battery to hold a lot of electricity and a less expensive, smaller solar panel that can fill up that big battery over the course of a few days. Or you can just add more solar panels and have an excess or surplus on the regular, which is prevented from destroying anything by using the charge controller. So in this book, they have four 100 watt solar panels, wires with suitable connectors. You can use whatever kind you want. Anderson power pole um, is what I prefer. Whatever you're gonna use doesn't really matter as long as it's all the same. Uh, solar power combiner or universal connector and solar charge controller deep cycle batteries. These deep cycle batteries are gonna be something like you're gonna find in a vehicle or a car or whatever. When you go to expand the batteries, you need to wire the batteries in parallel to create the battery bank. If you do it in series, you're gonna add voltage. You're gonna double voltage every time you add it. That's a problem. Now, it's good to know the difference between these two so that you can go from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system if you need or you can just stick with a 12 volt system throughout the whole duration. Right here explains what you need to do. Essentially, all the positive are connected, all the negative are connected. You're not going positive to negative, positive to negative. When you go a battery with a positive connected to a positive, 
and a negative connected to a negative that keeps it at 12 volts. When you take the same battery and you go positive to negative, negative to positive, and then come out the back side of it, that takes it from 12 volts to 24 volts and it starts cycling it up. So take that knowledge, decide what type of volt system that you need and use it appropriately. A better way to explain this is on page 32. Position the four batteries in a row, number the batteries one through four with battery number four closest to the solar charge controller. Wire the positive terminal of the battery number one to the positive terminal of number two. Why the positive, why are the positive terminal of battery number two to the positive terminal of battery number three? Takeaway is all the positives connect, all the negatives connect. The output is going to be 12 volts if they're all 12 volt batteries. You can buy all of these things at places like Harbor Freight. I'm not supporting or not supporting any place specifically. I have purchased all of my stuff from BioAno um, in order to build the systems that I like to build. So let's talk real quick or show you how that system connects. This solar panel right here, it's a BioAno power panel. And I have this one as something that can be connected or added to an existing system. If I've got a vehicle with 100 watts on it and it's parked in the shade, I just pull one of these guys out and plug it into that vehicle and it stays at 100 watts. And then as long as my charge controller can handle it, if the sun does come out, now it's 200 watts. So this is a very simple solar panel that you can use. It's got legs on the back of it. If I can show you these legs right here that hold it up. It's a beefy, robust system that you can just use to take an existing system and add power to it in case there's snow or low light hours or you're on a vehicle parked in the shade. So this is my expandable kit. I have inside the kit itself. I've got wires that I can just plug straight in and it's 15 feet of this wire so that I can stick it out in the sunlight and leave myself in the shade. I've actually, BioNO is kind of cool. They've got a second variation of this that's way more wattage. This is just the same storage space on this solar panel, but it has more, pet, more panels. So it's double the wattage, okay? And again, this is just basically an expanding solar panel that will lean up by itself that I can add to an existing system. Got the solar panel, which will plug into the charge controller. And then pretend like I've spread that out in the sun. Plugs it into the charge controller. Red to red, black to black. And then the picture on the charge controller. Oh, do that right. So the picture on the charge controller will tell you this is the solar panel. The next thing I want to plug in is a battery. I'm going to grab this one. Red, red, black to black. And then the last thing I'm gonna plug in is whatever I want to power. In this instance, it could be a light, it could be a USB or whatever. And I currently have 13.2 volts that are coming out of the battery. There's no sunlight hitting these panels, so there's no electricity being added into the system. One other thing you might wanna consider is the ability to keep your batteries topped off so that when you leave or before you need them, they're already topped off. You're starting from full. You don't have to wait an entire day for your solar panel to fill them up. The way, the way that you're gonna do that is just get a charger, plug straight into the batteries, plug that thing in the wall, let it control and tend itself. There are multiple options if you wanna be mobile on this. I have a BioNO 120 watt power pack. I have two of these, cause I'll blow through the electricity on these. Um, and I just, uh, zip tie them together and then I have options in the way that it charges so I can just plug that into the output and have three or two USBs here and a USB there I can plug three of them in at the same time or I can run something off a cigarette lighter 
on the back of these, they have uh, 115, 110, which is nice. So I can charge a laptop with this. Now, that's gonna suck a lot of juice fast. So I want to be plugged into a good uh, solar panel system that's charging this actively while I'm using it at the same time. And then finally have this little dongle here that gives me the ability to go from this connection to an Anderson power pole, be that as an output to plug into a ham radio or as an input to pull electricity from the solar panel. All right guys, hopefully that's valuable to you. That's just one of the many uh, projects that you can do on Survival Sanctuary. That's just one of the many projects that you, you have in the book, Survival Sanctuary. If you're interested, hit the link and thank you for watching.